So Wilf was just pointing out your stocks movement today. It did move lower during your presentation here. On your 2020 outlook, it sounded like um, you forecast about 9 to 11% revenue growth um, and potentially lower sales of your sequencing system, the NovaSeq. Um, that seemed to affect Wall Street's uh, reaction to your stock. What do you think about that reaction? I think overall people were, were looking at the numbers we put out and uh, I think there was a little bit of higher expectation around what that number would be, primarily driven a little bit by a higher expectation around the direct-to-consumer market. Mm -hmm. And so we call that market coming down this year. Having said that, I think overall, uh, there's good news around what we expect to do in our sequencing business, which overall we expect to grow at 14%, which is higher than the 9 to 11% range, and sequencing consumables in that is to grow at 17%. So when you talk about direct-to-consumer sequencing, we're talking about things like 23andMe, Ancestry Kits, the things that people do at home. Um, is that market slowing? We've seen it slow for a while. Is, are you seeing that continue to slow? Fewer people are doing these kinds of things? Yeah, that market slowed down last year. So it's had a few years now, very strong growth in the 50 15, 16, 17 time frame. But last year we saw a slowdown and a couple of things are playing out. One, you know, that market was fueled primarily by interest in genealogy, you know, where do you come from? And as that market starts to slow, we expect the future growth will come from health predisposition. So, you know, what are you likely to be more predisposed to? But that market still has to build. And mm -hmm. I think there's some question around uh, the privacy of the data. And, and customers want to know and they want to feel secure that if they give somebody their data, that that data will be protected. So I think those are the dynamics playing out. Mm -hmm. Long term, we expect that market to grow, but it certainly slowed down last year. Well, you made an announcement here um, in the healthcare world. Um, with Roche uh, that you'll be applying um, your sequencing systems to um, cancer uh, diagnosis and testing. Tell us more about that collaboration and making it accessible to more people. Yeah, one of the, the biggest areas that genomics can make a difference and will make a difference going forward is in the management and treatment of cancer. Uh, cancer is a disease of the genome and we were very excited about the partnership we announced with Roche. And, and there are a couple of parts to that partnership. One is uh, Roche, one of the largest diagnostic players in the world, is going to be building tests that they are going to take to market to help patients select the right cancer therapies. And so they're going to be building these IVD tests that they then market. Uh, and I think that will be very helpful for, for patients in selecting the right therapy. Another part of the partnership is, you know, Roche has a very broad portfolio of oncology therapies. And so we are working with them so that the tests that we sell to the market as well uh, also help customers choose the oncology therapies that Roche provides. And so there's two parts of this partnership. We think it'll really help move the market forward. I have to ask you about some news that just came out in the last couple weeks. Uh, you had made an agreement to buy Pacific Biosciences, a smaller competitor for $1.2 billion. After an FTC challenge, you mutually agreed to abandon the deal. What do you think precipitated that challenge and that level of scrutiny of your business? Sure. What we liked about what Pacific Biosciences did is that they are in a part of the market that's different from the market we're in. So we're in the short read sequencing market, and, and, and Pacific Biosciences plays in the long read sequencing market. So it's a complementary market. And you know what we are very good at, Illumina, is driving the cost of sequencing down. And so as we looked at what PacBio had in terms of its products, we saw a real opportunity to get involved with their portfolio, drive the cost of sequencing down in the long read market, and accelerate that market. And so that's what you know that's what precipitated us talking to them. Um, ultimately, the FTC didn't give approval to get that deal done because uh, they felt we had a, a, a big position in the market. We obviously disagree with that uh, with that assessment, uh, but now. We're looking at alternatives. All right, well, we'll look forward to hearing more about what potentially those alternatives might be, Francis. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.